Welcome to my course uh, electrochemical energy storage and we are in module 1 the last lecture lecture number 5 where I will be still continuing the thermodynamic aspect uh, kinetics of electrochemical cells and then I will introduce uh, briefly the structural characteristics of uh, the electrode materials. Now, you know that uh, in this particular lecture, we will consider electrode and electrolyte requirements. What are the requirements of the electrode and electrolyte in conjunction to construct a cell? Then we will introduce Gibbs Duhem equation, which is important to understand the other concepts I will teach. Then we will talk about uh, electrode kinetics, uh, what are uh, what is the origin and uh, uh, in order to do that, I will have to talk about Butler, Volmer and Tafel equations, which are very important to understand uh, certain basics of uh, electrochemical energy storage. Then I will briefly introduce uh, the crystallography, which are very, very elementary and some important crystal structure which is pertinent to electrochemical energy storage and then other important structural characteristics of lithium ion battery materials. So, you know that uh, we already have uh, this term defined and uh, uh, as you can see that the open circuit voltage that I was talking about, this is the uh, difference of uh, uh, the chemical potential of electron uh, in cathode and uh, anode. Uh, so, this is there and divided by sorry for this small mishap, this bracket will be here divided by the Faraday constant. So, it is shown here um, the uh, cathode uh, which is given in the left hand side and anode in the right hand side. So, ideal electrochemical cell uh, which is uh, say considered a lithium ion battery the band gap of the electrode sorry the band gap of the electrolyte which is E g that must be greater than this voltage E into V o c. You can always write this is E into V o c because F is E into Avogadro number. So, you can cross multiply it Avogadro number you can consider 1 for 1 molar of the electroactive material. So, that should be uh, E g must be greater than that and addition in addition to that the electrolyte to be stable under operation it should not dissociate. So, the LUMO band of the electrolyte should be placed above the Fermi energy level of the anode. So, Fermi energy level of the anode is here and then this LUMO band um, this should be um, uh, that is lower unoccupied molecular orbital that should be upper than this. And uh, on the other hand, uh, the HOMO band this should be uh, placed below the Fermi level of the cathode. So, this is the Fermi level of the cathode, it should be lower than that. And this is required, otherwise, the electrolyte will get involved in the electron transfer process during operation. So, this uh, uh, will be oxidize and redu reduction reaction will go on. So, here a typical uh, lithium ion uh, uh, reaction uh, while the battery operates uh, I have shown it here. So, while you are talking about discharge of the battery then lithium is going from the anode part the so called negative electrode and then it is inserted in X which is the uh, battery material and electron is coming from the circuit to form the original cathode component and uh, during charge the reverse is true. So, lithium is getting oxidized here. Uh, so, lithium uh, in lithium plus and then it moves to the negative electrode. So, this uh, kind of uh, uh, characteristics must be maintained in order to get a good um, battery. Um, the performance of the battery will be good. Now, in chemical thermodynamics, uh, uh, we know that uh, this uh, is a, a concept uh, which comes under partial molar properties. So, if you consider an open system where uh, number of moles this n 1, n 2, n 3 up to n n moles that is constitutes uh, at a particular temperature and pressure. 
So, you can write the free energy that is a function of temperature, pressure and this moles. So, the total mole is the summation of N1, N2, etc. that we can consider as capital N. So, any small fluctuation either in temperature or in pressure or uh, in this uh, uh, mole fraction N i uh, that actually uh, yields uh, the differentiation this uh, it can be differentiate. So, this is the partial property del G del T when P and other things are constant into d T plus again del G del P then these things are constant into d P plus del G of del N 1 component where other components are constant P T are constant to D N N 1 and similarly for the second component and so on. So, now from the definition this partial uh, del G del N i where P T N 1 N 2 etcetera are constant that we have already defined as chemical potential. So, this mu therefore, they are known as partial molar Gibbs free energy. So, now at constant P and T we can write from this. So, D G is I have just put it at uh, chemical potential mu 1 and D N 1 mu 2 D N 2 mu 3 D N 3 plus mu i D N i up to that. So, at definite composition if I now integrate this one. So, I will get the value like mu 1 N 1 mu 2 N 2 and so on till mu i n i. Again I differentiate this. So, differentiate it by parts. So, d g is this component please do it and the remaining part is this one. So, slight arrangement I have done here. So, it will be mu 1 d n 1 then n 1 into d mu 1. So, all d n 1 in one side and all d mu 1 in other side. So, here this part um, is 0 this red expression which is a summation of n i d mu i that is equal to 0. So, for two component you can write that this n 1 d mu 1 is equal to 0 sorry n 1 d mu 1 this sum equal to 0. So, I am taking only two components. So, n 1 d mu 1 equal to minus n 2 d mu 2. So, this is actually the Gibbs Duhem equation and uh, from this I can uh, estimate that or I can understand that any change in chemical potential of any one of this component which is there in the system that is not independent with the other component. The other component will also change to maintain this relationship. So, if you change the chemical component com, com, uh, chemical potential of one particular component, the other component will also get affected. So, now we will talk about the electrode kinetics. Uh, in the last lecture what we did, we considered a very simple case where we calculated the cell potential under no load condition. You remember that voltage in open circuit condition. So, that means it is an open cell. I have not connected anode and cathode with a conducting wire. And electrolyte having no concentration gradient. So, we assumed uh, there is no concentration gradient and accordingly we can constitute that uh, metal, metal, then electrolyte, then metal, then another metal and then uh, estimated the value of VOC. So, there was no concentration gradient, but if you consider a practical battery, this is certainly not the case. We use the battery so that we can draw current out of it, right. So, that is the purpose and when we do that, then ultimately we create a flow of electron and ions in the whole electrochemical cell. Consider a Daniel cell, zinc and copper, you are connected with an wire. So, zinc gets oxidized, so electron flows from the wire and goes to the cathode and from the electrolyte copper sulphate or whatever is there copper ions are there. So, copper ions they takes this electron and then they gets reduced right. So, this part when it is there, so we ultimate create a flow of electron it is not under open circuit uh, condition. 
So, we will consider only this behavior of electrode. The transport phenomena of the electrolyte is actually beyond the scope of this particular lecture. So, at the electrode, a reaction takes place involving the exchange of the species, right. So, thermodynamics basically dictates that what is the cell potential would be under equilibrium condition, that is, cell potential when the rates of forward and backward reactions are equal. So, by creating a change in the electrochemical potential of the electrons away from the equilibrium condition, a current flow can be induced where the rate of either of the forward or backward reaction is higher than the other. So, that is the concept of the so called electrode kinetics. So, we will elaborate it. Ehring's activated complex theory, which is beyond the scope of this particular lecture, but in electrochemistry is a known topic. Uh, one define a rate constant and that follows this k is equal to b, which is a constant and then there is a potential barrier here as you can see del g star by r t. So, again you consider the physical process what is going on. Diffusion uh, is prevailing through electrolyte, lithium ion is coming from anode or cathode and going to the respective other electrode. Then absorption on the electrode is taking place. So, lithium coming and before insertion it gets adsorbed. Then transfer of electron is possible, electron is coming from the outer circuit and then transfer of electron possible and then finally, desorption of electron is taking place and then this lithium is finally diffusing inside the electrode. So, electrolyte diffusion is there, absorption of electrode is um, of this charge species is there, transfer of electron is there, desorption of electron is there and then finally, diffusion of the uncharged species inside the active material. So, these are the physical process that is going there. So, if I consider that C0 and Cr, they are the concentration of oxidized and reduced species then this K C into C 0 and K A into C R, they are the rates for the cathodic and anodic process. So, the magnitude of this charge transfer that will be uh, actually the Faraday constant which is uh, charge of an electron and Avogadro number. So, if I consider that uh, N A is 1, then Faraday charge transfer is nothing but this electron concentration F is equal to E. So, I can always write the anodic current, this anodic current is uh, defined by I A. So, that is this Faraday constant F into K A, uh, this is the weight constant and C R concentration of um, the uh, reduced species. So, this will be in subscript sorry for that. Similarly, I can define the cathodic current and the total current is always anodic current minus cathodic current. So, under equilibrium process probably this two will be almost equal I A and I C right. So, this is your electrode surface and here uh, there is a potential barrier, it must cross for this anodic and cathodic current to flow. And this is the Helmholtz plane which I already defined. Uh, so, that is uh, uh, due to this charge surface, this uh, double layer, uh, this plane uh, that is there. Now, I will insert the expression for k into the earlier relation here. So, I can always uh, uh, insert this uh, relation um, which I have derived from Arings activated complex theory. So, I will get this relation, please work it out, work it out um, step by step and this will all be in subscript. Uh, I have done it in several times, I do not know how it gets changed when I change the system from here to there. So, these are all uh, be careful, this is uh, all subscript terminology. So, clearly when this anodic current is more than the cathodic current, then total current is positive and we call this is anodic current. If 
because I A minus I C is the total current. And similarly, when cathodic current is more than anodic current, then the total current is negative. So we call it the is a cathodic process. So now you consider an equilibrium process. So in the non-equilibrium process, so metal ion is getting reduced. The work done is um, we can define this electron and the potential difference because now it is not any more uh, equilibrium process, but one is favorable with respect to others. So this was the red one was uh, the so-called equilibrium process, but the blue one is a non-equilibrium process. You can see that if this, if it, if I consider this is cathodic, if it wants to go, you will have to cross an extra barrier here and then pass this barrier and move here. And on the other hand, in case of anodic process, you are gaining this. So you will have to go from only here to here. So this is the difference. So in the cathodic process, as I have said that del G star plus this alpha F and potential difference, where this alpha term is a shape factor. It defines that where exactly is this electron what is their position. So either it could be at 0 at one, one end and 1 is another end. So the value will be in between 0 to 1. So you will have to cross this barrier. And in case of anode, uh, basically this one is uh, gaining. So del G minus 1 minus alpha and F and del phi. So I can substitute uh, the value for current I equation which I uh, derive here. So here F B A C R exponential of this I have just uh, divided minus this is for the cathode part. So in one case uh, it is gaining this energy in other case it will have to cross this energy barrier. So I can estimate uh, or I can I can define the overpotent potential which is eta that is the potential in equilibrium condition uh, where no current was flowing um, uh, which is defined as del phi equilibrium and uh, this is the case where actually the current is flowing this this del phi so del phi minus del phi equilibrium so that uh, if you subtract one from other, then we call this is the overpotential. So overpotential is defined as eta and uh, this is a deviation from actual applied potential from equilibrium cell potential derived from thermodynamics in order to drive a desired amount of current. So there are three possible ways. Uh, sources of this overpotential. The first one is we call activation or surface potential that is basically created due to the activation barrier of electron transfer across the electrode electrolyte interface. Second one is the ohmic overpotential that is created due to a resistance to ionic motion in the electrolyte because the ions are moving through the electrolyte in presence of a concentration gradient which otherwise was not there when we were talking about the equilibrium kind of situation. And third one is the concentration over potential. So electrochemical potential gradients that is created due to the different concentration of the participating species. So remember when we estimate the uh, cell potential, it varies with the concentration. So this over potential term I will now introduce in anodic current. So it is a continuous uh, um, derivation. So you will have to do it separately for a better understanding. I am going a bit fast, but you will have to do line by line. So anodic current, then you put this relation. Um, so basically this anodic current uh, is given as this, this term is all related to the equilibrium part because I have put the uh, over potential term here it. So the rate part is the equilibrium part. So I can define this one as a um, IA equivalent and then this part is remaining. 
this part is remaining. So, under equilibrium condition, this anodic cathodic uh, is same current. So, it is I0 and we call it sometimes we call is the exchange current density. Similarly, for the cathodic part uh, which I derived earlier, uh, this also you can put like this, right. So, now if you have the total current which is I A minus I C anodic minus cathodic, then from these two relation you put this as I 0, you get this relation. So, this term uh, which is undefined it is nothing but eta. So, you consider that eta is here. So, you get this particular term. Now, when this over potential is very small, right, the over potential I defined the del phi value for a non equilibrium condition minus del phi for equilibrium condition. When this is very small, then you can put this uh, exponential series and take the first two term 1 plus x and then work it out and this two terminology uh, somewhere it will cut and uh, particularly 1 minus 1 will cut and eventually you will get this relation this and this will cut. So, I is nothing but I 0 into eta f eta is the over potential by R t. So, this is the case where over potential is very small. Now, there are two other possibility. Another one is this over potential is very large and it is positive. So, once this is there, then it is very large as well as positive term. So, this can be neglected because minus exponential minus term is there. So, you can neglect it. So, your i will be something like this. So, i is equal to i 0 and this term will remain. You can do it l n i in various way you can plot it. So, you want to make a straight line then you will have to plot, plot like this and remember again this eta term is uh, uh, not here. So, this is eta f by r t wherever you find this question mark. So, we call this equation, this equation or this equation, this is the Tafel equation for anodic current. The third possibility is uh, over potential is very large and negative. So, when it is very large and negative, the first term that is 0, again this is eta. So, that term is 0. So, you end up with this relation and you can take log at both side and give a, get a straight line equation. So, this part is defined here. So, this is your cathodic current. If you plot the cathodic current uh, 1, uh, then you will see that this value is something like this. If you plot this equation, this i versus eta, then you will get this one. So, this is the total summation of this two particular current, right. And you can see a part of it is linear. So, the linear part is almost the case where your over potential is very small. So, the, from the butler Vomer equation, we can actually derive the Tafel equation and it will be very important for us to see later how it works. So, now the structure of the cathode or anode material is important. So, the basic requirements, the, the way I said that electrode, electrolyte and another electrode combination is important as far as chemical potential and homolumo band difference, these are important. Here I am talking about the individual electrode material. So, the cathode should have a very high lithium chemical potential with respect to anode in order to maximize the voltage. So, voltage is high means your energy is also high. Cathode and anode material should allow the insertion and exertion of large amount of lithium to maximize the total charge because with L lithium how much it is going your N is will be more instead of 1 if it is 2 then N will be more. So, you will have more voltage. So, more number of electron release are absorbed is important. So, you will have to search for those kind of electrode material. If you consider the secondary or rechargeable lithium battery, the lithium insertion exertion should be reversible. Once it during charging it is coming out, 
during discharging it must go back equal amount there should not be any loss of lithium anywhere so that will give a good cycle life material should support a uh, mixed conduction type of behavior with good electronic and lithium ion conductivity if either one is low then the performance at higher current drawing rates will be impacted the material should be chemically stable without undergoing any reaction with the electrolyte and finally the material should be inexpensive and environmentally benign and lightweight in order to increase the gravimetric energy density so now i will just brush you uh, with certain uh, known crystallographic concept which you might have uh, read in your second year course if not then i have cited two important uh, reference you please read this chapter on crystal structure so the crystal lattice is a three dimensional array of points and uh, this is related by translation symmetry so translation you can occur at three independent kind of direction depending on that you have the lattice parameter and the angle between the uh, respective lattice parameter that constitute the crystal lattice unit cell is the smallest possible construction which is having highest symmetry cubic at cubic uh, lattice for example and crystal system there are seven unique uh, shapes that can be used to fill the three dimensional space these are seven crystal system into which all crystals are classified bravis lattice there are 14 bravis lattice this is constructed by three separate type one is primitive one lattice point per unit cell then body centered lattice one lattice point at the corners and one at the center or a b c or f centered lattice a lattice point at the corners and others at either a b or 3 f of the faces then this is the relation between the uh, lattice constant and the angle between them that define the dif different types uh, of the um, crystal system and the highest symmetry is cubic lowest symmetry is triclinic right and uh, lattice point per cell you can estimate um, for example if you have a primitive lattice one lattice point at the interior of the cell can be thought belonging to entirely to that particular cell if it is face then it is uh, half shared if it is at the corner it is shared by 8 so we call basis which is group of atoms associated with each and every lattice point um, we can describe the crystal structure in terms of a bravis lattice and a basis so basis and bravis lattice constitute the crystal structure and the coordination number is important number of nearest neighbor that we have so there are various types of symmetry and depending on the symmetry we have 32 types of point group one 2 3 4 i have shown this is a mirror plane um this one is uh, uh, first one is a two fold axis three fold axis and four fold axis and it has shown that in case of four fold axis if you 90 degree rotate it you will get back the same points there could be an inversion so across this line it is just inverted there could be roto inversion if it is a four fold axis you go 90 degree and then it will go to the other side invert it so these are different uh, types of symmetry operation if you have this symmetry operation across the all crystal system then in total you have 32 uh, point groups and then these point groups are arranged to give you the space group which is beyond the scope for this particular course but indeed we will be using the space group in defining certain things so sometimes a three axis system is not enough uh, particularly for the rhombohedral and hexagonal system so there is a <coughs> miller indices hkl plane in case of the um, hexagonal system we have a uh, bravis miller notation which is having four index system 
and this three index system can be converted into four instance system both for plane and direction and vice versa. So, there are uh, certain algebraic way to do that. Uh, please go through the literature that I will suggest to clarify this idea. And um, then uh, we have this Pauling rule which is important. The rule one um, is the coordinated polyhedron anion is formed about each cation and cation anion distance is determined by the sum of these two radii and coordination number is determined by the radius ratio. Uh, again, I am telling that this is the gist of the crystal structure and you will have to read the chapter uh, whatever I will uh, give in the study material very thoroughly. Second rule is the stable structure, the total strength of bond that reach an anion in a coordination polyhedra from all neighboring cations should be equal to the charge of the anion. Third one, the polyhedra in a structure tend not to share edges or faces. If the edge are shared, the shared edges are shortened shared faces are the least favorable. Then the fourth rule is crystal containing different cations of high valence and a small coordination number tends not to share polyhedron element with each other. So, they will remain separated. And final rule is the number of essential different kinds of constituents in a crystal tends to be small. So, this Pauling rule uh, define uh, particularly for the ionically bonded solid that how they are packed together and it is not an individual unit cell, but we are now considering the polyhedra which is connected. So, here is one uh, example for the cube coordination number is 8 and RC by RA ratio anion to cation, cation to anion ratio is 0 0.732 and you change that thing your coordination number will change and the polyhedra will also change. But for the triangle for example, it is lowest 0.155, for cube it is highest 0 0.732. Now, uh, rock salt structure is one of them. Here you can see that uh, uh, two inter interpenetrating FCC lattice uh, that is there. And uh, example of this type of uh, crystal lattice is uh, FeO, cobalt oxide and uh, manganese oxide, etc. And uh, then we have another uh, important crystal lattice is zinc plant and this is interpenetrating FCC lattice, uh, one of anions and another one of uh, cation which uh, you can see it here. So, for oodzite type of structure, we stack the tetrahedra as ABAB. For zinc blend, we stack the tetrahedra as ABCABC. So, this is also another important crystal structure. Example is zinc oxide, aluminum nitrate, and beryllium oxide. The other one is uh, molybdenum disul disulfide. In molybdenate, the MO atoms are located in the position which correspond to the unit cell of the FCC structure and sulfur-sulfur pair is centered along the C direction here and uh, the stacking sequence can be written as uh, A and small b and then again capital A, capital B, small a, capital B. The capital letter that denotes the S atom and lowercase letter as MO atoms. The metal atom has coordination number 6 as it is in the TiO2 and cadmium iodide structure. More ionic compound form rutile structure which I have not defined in this particular lecture and it is a homework to read about the rutile structure for you. Because of the weak interlayer van der Waals forces, the layer can slip with respect to each other. This is a good dry lubricant like graphite. Graphite is also having a layer structure due to weak interlayer bonding. It can also store external ions between the sheets. So, for lithium ion also this kind of structure for lithium ion battery will be important. 
spinel structure I will be talking uh, in details. It is basically a cubic close pack structure and inside the oxygen packing there are two types of void tetrahedral type and octahedral type. Tetrahedral type voids are assumed by double valent cations and octahedral are usually trivalent cation. The normal spinel is having a structure AB2O4 and there are possibility for inverse spinel structure where the formula is BABO4 all the octahedral void content comes to the tetrahedral void and sorry half of this octahedral bond octahedral void content comes to the tetrahedral and whole tetrahedral goes to the octahedral. So that is the inverse spinel structure and we will come back to this type of structure. Uh, while I will be talking more about uh, the lithium ion battery operation. Finally, perovskite structure uh, is uh, as you can see there are three different types of cation. The central octahedral position uh, usually titanium sits here, oxygen shows sits in the face centered and corners are assumed by larger cation like barium and this type of material also we have used. Uh, uh, to make uh, the electrode material uh, although not very common but uh, as a part of a short case study I will introduce it more when I will be talk about the um, use of perovskite and spinel structure um, for lithium ion battery. And finally uh, these are the olivine structure the tetrahedra is associated from one another that means the tetrahedra do not share any oxygen ions, uh, usually hexagonal ABAB kind of stacking of anions is similar to one seen in alumina. Unlike alumina, some of the cations are also in the tetrahedral sites and others are in the octahedral sites like spinel. Like spinel, the pairs of tetrahedra are not actually sharing age. So, this is the complicacy of this type of structure. The result of this kind of distribution of cations uh, is that the crystal structure is orthorhombic uh, with a B lattice parameter by far the longest one and O2 minus ions they are at the corner of the tetrahedra they are linked by OA and O bonds. This is also another uh, type of uh, structure which is heavily used in case of lithium as well as sodium ion batteries. So, uh, for uh, uh, this particular lecture um, um, the uh, Barry Carter book uh, is a good one and uh, for the other part uh, the thermodynamic part along with the other reference you should consider this book as well and especially the basics of crystal structure uh, Askeland and Fule. This book is quite good and the whole chapter 3 should be read uh, very seriously. So, in this particular lecture uh, initially I talked about electrode electrolyte requirement then Gibbs to Hem equation then electrode kinetics and then Butler, Volmer and Tafel equations. Then basic structure characteristics of lithium and battery materials are established, crystallography was introduced and revisited although it is not an exhaustive treatment and I just touch certain points and you will have to read if you are not familiar with this. Whoever is familiar with this structure it is okay and study of different types of crystal structure relevant to battery materials are introduced. Thank you for your attention.